This is Adriana from Youth 101. This is part of the series from Reset, and this topic is going to be about relationships. This video is actually meant for Valentine's Day, but I myself needed to take a break and ponder about, about the content for this video. I'm actually going to be sharing some personal, uh, a personal story, call it an antidote, and as well as uh, scriptures. First off, I wanted to start off with saying that no one can make anyone else change. Um, I myself have been in a relationship where I was a believer and the other person was not. At first it did make me uncomfortable, but I began to accept it after on. And I do remember there was a point at the beginning where I where I was I did ask God, God, how how am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to? I was wondering, do I minister onto them or as part of my duty and because I love you, God, or should I just back off because I had already ministered and they weren't interested? Um, later on the line, I, I came to realize it was more important to be myself and not hide God, but not be a Bible banker about it. I wasn't saying, oh, you're going to go to hell, but I would say, look, this is what I love about God. These are some of the virtues I follow. And that, that was enough for me, actually. I continued to pour out God in my life, as I did regularly, without someone else's opinion on the matter affecting it. And I was happy for a while with that. However, um, I do know that that is not the case for everyone else. Oh, look, that's my dog. Oh, well, you know, these videos. Oh, uh, we actually make, we actually have a tripod. Um, last video where we had, um, Sylvia, she actually had a tripod. Everyone in the team now has tripods for the Youth 101 videos. And I used to do a lot of edits. But I know these videos are really important, so I'm trying to make them as real and as scripted as possible. So if you hear my dogs in the background, oh well, you're going to have to deal with it. But you don't have to deal, <laughs> but what you don't have to deal with is um, someone else saying that they don't want to be a believer. Um, let me actually pull out the scripture I have right here. And I have my little notebook again. First Corinthians seven thirteen to sixteen, and if woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him, for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through her believing husband. Excuse me, for the unbelieving woman has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they're unholy. Well, you know, um, I am actually copying this down. I must have just written it down improperly. So I wanted to actually share that my parents are mixed. My mom is a believer, but my father is a atheist, agnostic, what have you. My father did actually give me a hard time as I was a child um, about being a Christian, about going to church or about praying. He did give me a hard time, but later on, as I got older, my, my mom told me, you know, he does it for a reason. I said, what do you mean? He's, He's horrible, mom. He's horrible. It's like he does it because he knows that you're not going to take it from him. And that way you're strong enough to be able to keep on with God, even though it's someone close to you saying no. That way when you're older in a relationship, you're not turned away from God because someone else is, the other person is not a believer. And I was just, I was amazed how much my own father, who was, who actually just worshipped his own way of life rather than God, he would he respected my relationship with God. And I was just in awe. And um, I know that there are some, some people who will go to church with, even though they may not be truly a believer, they will support the relationship because they may not feel comfortable with God or maybe they haven't come to terms with something. Maybe they may never come to terms. But they will not hinder someone else's relationship. And if you're watching this video and you're one of those people, 
um, hats off to you. And um, if you know someone like that, don't get mad at them, but also don't give up on them. Keep on bringing them, you know. There's something that they're supporting. Let them keep on supporting your relationship and also show, show you the fruits of the virtue. After all, the fruits of the spirit are meant to be shared. Much like a light, uh, much like a lamp, you're not supposed to just hide it. You're supposed to show it and let it be known. Now I want to go on with the next part of um, 1 Corinthians 15 to 16. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not in bondage in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Basically, it says if you're in a relationship with someone who's an unbeliever, it's fine as long as you keep on show, be, walking your own walk with God and not letting it affect you. But if you end up breaking up with that person or maybe divorcing that person, um, don't be upset with it. It's like, oh, man, I... I was their path to salvation. I could have helped them, you know, it was through them. Now I was the only Christian person they knew. Now they're just gonna go back to that way of life and now now they're never gonna know God and now this and now that and that's gonna get you nowhere. And you're not gonna be in peace. You know, it's just it's hard and you may love that person. But it's not your responsibility. It is your duty. It is the duty that we love to carry. And it is for our own joy that we like to share the kingdom of God. But it's not like, you need to change. You need to change. Has anyone ever, for has have you ever been willing to change because someone has forced you to change? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can only make it drown. Um, even Jesus says, in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So what makes you think that you can, pardon me if I become a little bit more aggressive, but this is the truth and it must, it needs to be stated bluntly. You can't change anyone. So stop trying to. Focus on changing yourself fixing your relationship with God before you think, before trying to force someone else to change. You know, I, I know I was with, sometimes with my friends and I, I listened to the audio Bible in my car, you know? And sometimes when my friends would come into the car, I'd kind of like pause it, you know, change it. And like, I put some music like, psst, 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 and like, so, and they're kind of Christians too. So I, I was wondering like, whoa, 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 this is affecting my relationship. That's my dog scratching, by the way. So he was like, okay, you know what? I'm told So I told him, hey, you know, I listened to this audio Bible CD. Do you mind if I like, if, hey, do you mind if like we just like are quiet for a little bit and, you know, just listen to some of it because I really want to catch up on it. And you know what? They actually didn't mind. They actually said, oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. It's like, yeah, sometimes I'm really busy and I don't get to read as much as the Bible or, or I don't have always have the Bible with me, so when I'm driving, I can hear it. It's like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, it is. So likewise, you don't have to be afraid of sharing God or be timid about it. Because remember what I just said earlier, 